I wanted to talk about some plants that I most likely will not be buying again. I word that very loosely because I may buy them again, but there are also valid reasons as to why they're on this list. So hopefully filming this will jog my memory next time I see one of these available at the plant store and I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna buy it. I'm very interested to see what's on your list. So please go ahead, leave that comment. First up on this list is a plant I do actually already have in my collection, but if anything were to happen to this plant, I would not repurchase. Hoya species of Finis Bertoniae. Bert for short, because I don't know how to pronounce it. This one has done like a 180 for me. This for a long time was actually one of my favorite plants and really my overall favorite Hoya variety. But the issue I'm having with this one as an indoor plant is it is so easy, too easy in fact, because it is constantly blooming. Like this baby at any given time has like 20 to 30 peduncles on it. And I know this because I used to try to keep up with the blooms and trim them off because they leak sap so prolifically. Compared to any other variety of Hoya I've had bloom for some reason the Burt really, really leaks. It would drip down and get all over everything and it's just seriously such a mess to clean up. So that's why I don't like this plant. And then side note, the blooms smell like butterscotch, which I hate butterscotch. So that wasn't like super nice to me, but that's not really the main reason why I would never buy this. It blooms very easily. So I would never buy this again. It's a mess. <laughs> Next up is an Aglionema on Anya Mani. Anya Mani. This is probably the Aglionema variety that I find the most beautiful and interesting to look at. I just love the speckled, like very contrasted coloration of the leaves. I have tried everything for this plant care-wise and I just cannot get it to be happy. I feel like I've tried everything for it and no matter what, it'll push out leaves and then they'll all just die off out, it seems like out of nowhere. It's just really a frustrating one. And honestly, because of this, I don't think I'll ever purchase an Aglionema again in general because I do kind of have issues with them every time I try to keep them. But this one specifically, I just know it will not work out between us because I have given it my full effort and that has not been near close good enough. So it's just not gonna happen. And it is also a little bit more expensive Aglionema variety. So it's just not worth it in my opinion as beautiful as it may be. Although, you know, if you're good with Aglionema, give it a shot and post lots of photos so those of us that are not good with Aglionema can still enjoy their beauty, but without the effort and sadness of caring for them. <laughs> Another past favorite of mine that I will never buy again is a Philodendron Lickety Split. I know they actually renamed this or reclassified this as a the modophyllum, I think. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. That's probably the wrong word entirely. But anyway, philodendron lickety split is what a lot of us have known it as for a long time. Um, this plant is so beautiful. It was one of my favorites in my collection for a long, long time. It's one I got in the beginning of my collecting. Ultimately though, I had to get rid of it because it was a stinking thrip magnet. Thrip to me are the absolute worst pest, plant pest to deal with because once you get them, it's like very, very difficult to get rid of them. They spread really easily. So 100%, like there's not even a chance that I would ever buy this plant again. I like am not even tempted. I will look at how beautiful it is in the store, but I know I do not want to bring it into my house and infect the rest of my plants because I just know they all have thrips. They're built in with thrips. So that's why I will not be buying again. In my big box store shop with me video, I did express interest in a gold dust croton. I just don't think that there's a scenario where I would ever buy one of these for inside my house. If I ever did move somewhere super humid, I would definitely have it as like a landscape plant. I find them so beautiful, but indoors they just, don't do well for me and they never really get up to their full potential. So I'm left kind of dis, I, I don't know, I'm less left dissatisfied and to me, they just never look great inside. They get kind of dull, it seems like, because they do natively live places that are very humid and sunny. So yeah, I, I just can't provide that type of environment indoors, maybe in a terrarium setup someday. But other than that, like I don't really see myself buying, you know what, actually maybe I am gonna buy one for a terrarium. That's a really good idea. Am I ready to get hurt again? No. Caladium, I don't see myself buying caladium ever again. Plants that have to go into dormancy and you have to like bag up the bulb and all that stuff, 
overwhelms me. So for that simple reason alone, I will not be getting a caladium again. If I had fewer plants in my collection, it may be something I would consider because then I would probably be able to handle a little bit more thought into my plants like that, like dormancy and stuff. Probably not. I think they are very pretty. I guess I could have them as an outside plant. For some reason that feels more manageable, but yeah, I'm probably never going to buy one of these again. This one is one I've actually recently bought. Now I know if I'm not able to keep mine alive and it dies, I will not be getting it again. And it is a foxtail fern, foxtail asparagus fern. They're beautiful. I love the way this looks. It fills in plants so beautifully, like it sends out the really long tendrils that just kind of go everywhere and poof out and fill out a space. So I really, really like the look of this plant, but the issue I've had when I've had this plant in the past and then also now, the little leaf things, needle things, frond things fall off everywhere. They're kind of pokey and overall very messy. So I, that's why I got rid of mine in the first place. I kind of forgot about how annoying that was to me and then got it again now and I'm experiencing the same thing. So it wasn't a fluke that first time and I don't think I would ever buy this plant again. Yeah, it drives me nuts. I can handle a little mess, but this is like pokey mess. Not gonna do it. Nope. Number seven is a variegated Burl Marks philodendron. It's a plant that I like better small. I did actually get my plant very small and I really loved it then, but now as it's just gotten a lot bigger, I don't really love the way it looks. I mean, it's pretty, but there's just something about it that dissatisfies me somehow. I'm going to keep it and take care of it, but honestly, this is one that like, if I had to get rid of some plants, it would definitely be one of the first ones to go out of my collection. So I'm just never gonna buy it again because where I like it small, I don't like it when it starts to get a little bit more mature. Although it is a very low maintenance plant, I just don't really get much from it. It'll be the first to go. I'm selling it, gone. Cissus Amazonica. I showed this in one of my recent videos and I like taped it up my wall and everything, but it just looks so awkward. And this is one, again, I've had in the past, got rid of it when I moved. Wasn't really sad about it because it is a plant that no matter how, how long I've had them, the leaves just stay super, super small and it'll grow pretty quickly, but the leaves are just tiny and I think it might be a humidity issue. I may end up just keeping this down in my grow tent where the humidity is higher, but I absolutely love the look of the mature big leaves but for some reason I just cannot get these plants there and I have tried with them several times for quite long like intervals and it just hasn't worked out so you know what I'm realizing that it just Cissus Amazonica might not be in the stars for me but that's okay I'm thankful for Instagram so that I can see other people's like better looking, happier specimens. <laughs> the last philodendron on this list is a philodendron subhustatum, subhustatum. You know, the one with the red undersides of the leaves. I really like this plant and I think it is such a beautiful plant. I really, really do. There's something about the long lobe philodendron leaves that I really, really love. And I really like the color of this one too, but it's another one that for some reason I just cannot get like exactly right. So I do have this plant right now, but it just kind of like ebbs and flows how well it's doing. So kind of like the Aglionema I talked about earlier, it'll do okay for a little bit. Something will just be not quite right. And then it really rapidly declines and will lose leaves. And then I kind of have to like start over with it. It's definitely like a me issue. I just for the life of me cannot figure it out. And it makes me feel bad. I want the plant to be happy. So like with all of these that I currently have in my collection, I'm going to do my best with them to get them happy and like try to figure it out. But if the one I have in my collection right now were to die off, I definitely would not buy it again, which is a bummer because I do think it's a very cool, beautiful philodendron. Got any tips? Number 10, last up is a <laughs> Alocasia Freideck. <laughs> This one's probably not a shocker. I do really, really, really love the way this plant looks. Like it might be one of the most beautiful plants on this entire list. I, I genuinely think when they're happy and have more than two leaves, but I just never was able to get the plant to grow multiple leaves. Like I think the max I was able to get it to grow was three and then it would start killing off the older leaves. And that was driving me crazy. I did accidentally kill mine recently. 
and I just don't think that it's a plant I ever plan to repurchase. I just think I need to come to terms with the fact that we don't mesh very well, so I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not. Okay, so those are all of the plants on my list right now. Let me know what plants on, are on your list and why, and thank you so much for watching. I will see my next one. Bye!